Hello. And now I wanted to continue with John Dewey and uh, William James for a little while and uh, look at the differences, uh, starting really with the general um, characteristic of process and pragmatism and its rejection of uh, foundationalism and uh, past empirical um, uh, philosophies with regards to Locke, of course. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the rejection of foundationalism um, is really, uh, it, it's, it, the countering for that is the uh, primacy of concrete experience as you see them discuss. And so the primacy of concrete experience of, is a uh, more of a interwoven natural um, um, philosophy as opposed to the abstract um, isolated uh, stoved uh, rooftop with Descartes, for example. Um, and so, yeah, the interwoven process of, you know, there's no event just in a singular atomistic sort of way. It's a interrelated um, way of, 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 of explaining experience um, as opposed to some abstract model. For William James, he actually has something called of radical empiricism, where he discusses the consequences of um, you know, concrete experience, you know, what are your models actually um, able to demonstrate uh, if they're successful or if there are consequences for your beliefs? Uh, that's um, really William James saying that you know, Locke, in the way he has a, his theory of experience isn't radical enough uh, for that um, um, empirical sort of uh, methodology, if you will. You see with modern science that we talked about in the last video. Um, so uh, for William James, you know, there's no um, real discussion of metaphysics that um, you know, don't have consequences, uh, uh, whether or not you're thinking about them. You know, things like total knowledge isn't um, absolute certainty, of course, uh, that isn't really interesting to the pragmatics um, here. Um, so William James and his psychology, as we talked about in the last video, is you know, forced concrete experience that we have to take into our own lives. And so, you know, we have to have, make, you know, decisions based off of the portion evidence um, you know, he's harking back to Locke and trying to build upon it with his psychology. Um, and so, um, the consequence of beliefs, um, are him really saying though, as well with psychology, that there are, you know, certain beliefs that are so spontaneous that we can't really just, you know, rationalize them in the sort of, um, way Locke uh, would have seen fit. We, you know, sometimes there's just action uh, and direct response uh, towards it. And of course, there is the famous uh, line for any evidential philosophy in general, which is, you know, your evidence isn't good enough to support that we need evidence. Um, that's the classic line. And so um, another thing that I think is interesting is with William James with regards to the psychological differences in that tradition of, um, you know, the American uh, public being able to, you know, kind of armchair psychology, everyone uh, around them and their, uh, you know, political enemies and whatnot. You can definitely see that in, in the works here uh, towards the way, you know, we as a people kind of uh, see the world uh, and instrumentation and, this pragmatist uh, philosophy and uh, you can see through William James you know it goes back towards you know political views with case selection and, and predictive capabilities of you know what makes uh, liberals and conservatives uh, you know, I think Strauss has uh, you know pieces on you know generational archetypes with events with warfare and whatnot so there there's a long history of 
using psychology towards you know philosophy and political philosophy that could be drawn here um, and so uh, you know one of the things of course that is very important to for this method is finding a natural common denominator or you know the kind of generic human experience outside of you know these idiosyncratic uh, and cultural factors um, you know if you want to give an evidentialist you know kind of universal claims or something like that you would want to find uh, a common denominator uh, towards human experience as opposed to just um, you know cultural beliefs or stigmas or something like that and that's another uh, Thing to watch out for in uh, these thinkers but uh, we're gonna put James down now and look at uh, John Dewey so John Dewey um, is of course a naturalist uh, philosopher uh, Dewey is uh, using that uh, tradition that uh, is forming with uh, Darwinism he's the latest thinker we've gotten to so far uh, he lives all the way to the 50s I think so uh, he's very interested of course in Darwin and indebted to him in a lot of ways and so if we're gonna look at how Dewey explains experience um, Dewey of course is in line with Whitehead and James and that psychology uh, and uh, you know uh, cognition if you will as opposed to Locke's you know passive uh, experience there's the emotional experience and cultural experience coming together in a sort of synthesized way as opposed to just you know abstraction off alone not in history and uh, the tabula rasa if you will and one of his uh, famous uh, terminology if you will is his description of fluid experience so fluid experience is important for Dewey because it's this sort of constant flowing process, the sort of um, you know, mode of, uh, of normality, if you will, where everything is kind of just as is. There's nothing, um, you know, I, I can look out my window right now on a, this summer afternoon and, you know, the birds are chirping. Everything's in motion. I don't really have to think about any sort of um, issues with the harmony outside my window right now. But uh, that's an example of fluid experience, whereas, as you'll see with his description of problem situations, that's when I'm ha I have to think. You know, there's a, there's a neighbor who needs something. They come up to my door. They ring my doorbell. That's a problem situation. I have to address it. I have to start thinking, what could they need? Um, something like that. So um, problem situations are the wrestling of thought. And uh, the intellect takes its role as um, the, its, its resolution of, you know, the disruption of fluid experience um, that demands thought to come up to begin with, um, to, uh, you know, think experimentally uh, for a problem that arose that disrupted fluid experience. Uh, you can see the Hegelian tradition here with the thesis of you know, everything coming along naturally in that fluid process and the antithesis of a problem situation arising and then you get the synthesis of the solution returns back towards that process of fluid experience once uh, you uh, apply your experimental thoughts towards the problem situation. So experience or growth is an evolutionary process uh, where you incorporate, you know, past problem situations onto, uh, you know, the progression of yourself, those decisions and factors uh, in your environment and how it interacts with you. Uh, this is how you end up with something like kind of functional psychology. And so for Dewey, you can perhaps see with regards to his naturalist uh, philosophy that there's no fixed species because everything's in a kind of growth process and so um, you know he, he takes on the Aristotelian tradition of um, you know fixed essences or forms um, 
there is no universals for uh, Dewey. Uh, there's nothing intrinsic or ha there's no fixed ends uh, to pursue or uh, fixed laws of, of thought. Um, intellect is a tool of adjustment. It's all, always constantly changing in the process of environmental factors and uh, the naturalist relationships, as it were. So there is no universals for uh, John Dewey. Um, and the intellect is a tool um, uh, made to accommodate uh, uh, that interaction. And uh, experimental thinking is the application of the scientific method to uh, everything. That's his uh, epistemology, if you will. And it's a description of the natural environment of practical demands of concrete experience. Uh, how does uh, um, you know inquiry operate according to with regards to natural selection? Um, and uh, there's another uh, interesting terminology uh, with regards to operationalist uh, thinking, uh, which is the proposal for problems and uh, how do we operate? those hypotheticals um, you know this is of course interesting for anyone into political theory and the American public kind of once again I think you know shows that tradition of our thinking especially perhaps with regards to you know the right as it were with you know what is uh, you know, what how are we going to actually do these operational um, ideas how can we make these experimentation actually come to concrete experience? Uh, you know, we think all the time of the classic arguments about welfareism and um, whatnot on, as the left offers up uh, these different solutions and you have the American conservative who says, well, what is this gonna actually go in operation? Where are you going to get the tax dollars? Uh, you know, that, that conversation's been going on for a millennium now it seems um, but uh, you can see that here again with the uh, pragmatist fathers here with uh, that kind of being ingrained in the American psyche and I think it's indebted with that here but anyway as it regards to applied science uh, which is really a you know what what are we able to do with scientific theory uh, it, it, is it's not uh, you know the nature of reality we, we can't really know that but we can know uh, you know what works and what doesn't with its instrumentation uh, through operationalism um, so you know understanding the fundamentals of reality we can leave that to you know someone who likes to sit in the stove heated, heated room and question their own existence uh, during the French winter but um, you know you don't need to have the fundamentals of reality if you can find applied knowledge towards environmental situations and being able to model experimental thinking and really producing the results or the consequences for William James uh, out of that, uh, whether good or bad. Um, and you can see as for uh, his ethics, uh, which I've kind of laid out for you here, is uh, instrumentation. Um, Dewey's values emerge out of problem situations. It's not, you know, what human beings are thinking about, uh, you know, when they're laying in bed about being a good person, but what they actually do in situations uh, when the intellect is required. That is where uh, ethics really, uh, that's where you get to the nitty gritty, if it were. Um, and so, if, if you have an instrumental ethics and in problem situations that are personalized, then each situation has a unique and satisfying experience. And so if you look at Dewey's piece on democracy and education, you can see at least uh, intended in the American education system, if it were, uh, it's supposed to have that sort of individual way of answering problem situations for that individual student in their way of life at that time uh, is what education is for Dewey instead of you know this long history and tradition of syllogisms or um, you know um, 
forms and, and, and their theory um, in an abstract sense? What, you know, how, how, do, how are your students actually doing in concrete experience in their day-to-day -day lives in a complex society? That's what Dewey's trying to get at with his education or his idea of it. Um, and so uh, you can see his uh, contemplation for the praxis of, of action um, towards uh, an education and its personalization. And you can see uh, you know, uh, when American education was at the forefront uh, you know, 200 years ago or something like that now, um, or even 100, you could say, in, in some places. Um, you can see that you know, there's that hybrid, hybridization of you know, classic values and classic education. We clearly learn from our Greeks and, and, and Romans. It's you know, the backbone of our civilization, if you will, uh, or its uh, foundations. But um, you can also see that you know there's that pragmatist, that instrumentation of well, what what about you know applied sciences, if it were uh, in today's world. And you can see really with you know, most people who are into the sciences, if you ever talk to, uh, or if you had a university education and you talk to people in STEM or something like that, um, you know understanding science isn't about understanding necessarily reality as a whole or um, um, having absolute certainty. It's about you know the functions of, of what these models can actually produce uh, for the utility of, of, uh, of its people. And you can see uh, that tradition here, of course. And so for Dewey, if we were going to talk then about you know religion and talking about classic values, um, Religion for Dewey is, um, it's, it's not static ideals, but uh, tools for life adjustment. If we're going to take the etymology, if you will, for religion and it's uh, you know, tying together, uh, re-tying or reorientating, reincorporating uh, a people together. Um, so Dewey's not interested, of course, in, you know, uh, a one true religion or which religion is is the truth but it's the instrumentation of how it reties communities and creates civilizations um, and how um, it, it can obviously bring a community together and once again you can see in the American public uh, if we're gonna be cynical for a second um, you know are Americans really true uh, and honest uh, Christians uh, most of the time compared to uh, even other countries uh, in today's world. Uh, you know, that's questionable, certainly. Um, so uh, I think it's kind of interesting to see uh, with metaphysics uh, and religious discussion is really just brought down to whether or not it's useful and it's uh, instruments for community. And so the pursuit of ideals of community uh, is God and uh, it serves as Dewey's denominator for all historical religions. So he examines attitudes uh, instead of uh, truth. And you can see uh, with his uh, regards to human rights and um, that sort of doctrine, uh, the humanist manifesto uh, for rights is that man emerges as a gradual process out of the environmental. Uh, factors of, uh, of being in the universe uh, and you can see here with the ideas of secular humanism which is I think really at least in today's world um, more in line with uh, the Western thought right now uh, whether or not we want to say that's a good thing but you definitely see this sort of secular humanist uh, naturalistic human rights, um, you know, God is, is just this uh, symbolic of, of man as opposed to um, you know, actually being truthful or, or actually believing in these uh, stories. It, it's, it's just the uh, symbolics of whether or not the story is actually useful for uh, a community. So once you look at all this terminology and, and see really the influence of modern applied sciences uh, 
towards the modern world as a whole, really. You can wrap your head around Dewey with uh, instrumental ethics, um, you know, radical empiricism with William James, and seeing what they're uh, getting at with regards to uh, the development of uh, natural uh, biology and uh, evolutionary uh, thinking, as well as the incorporation of um, the social theory of mind starting to emerge really in, in philosophy and cognition and, and understanding it and recognizing that and really the professionalization and uh, as it goes with the separating of the disciplines I talked about you know in the last video about William James uh, having a philosophy seat at uh, forgot what university it was um, but he was ultimately a psychologist. He really didn't follow philosophy uh, all that much. He was more inter interested in these uh, discussions on psychology and he was recognized, of course, and you'd see with uh, journals at the time, at the turn of the century, um, you know, science, philosophy, and psychology were you know, coupled all together, but you can see uh, that's going to start falling apart here as you get to uh, the specialization of all these different fields. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, what John Dewey and uh, the pragmatists as a large look to do with, uh, before we go on to look at uh, Dewey's reconstructive uh, philosophy. Uh, and I also might have a special post uh, to put out uh, in the meantime. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, outline for John Dewey and uh, see you guys for the next one. Hope you guys subscribe and uh, comment and like this video.